Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on refraction and lenses. The topic of this video is object image relationships for converging lenses. And we want to know how do you describe the images produced by a converging lens and how does that description depend upon the object's location? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. The characteristics of a converging lens image is dependent upon where the object is placed. In this video, we'll learn how to apply the lost art of image description in order to describe such images. Lost is a mnemonic to help us remember the four characteristic traits of images. The L in lost refers to the location of the image. The image can be on the same side of the lens as the object itself, or it can be on the opposite side of the lens at the 2F point, beyond the 2F point, or between the 2F and the F point. The O in loss refers to the orientation of an image. Sometimes you observe that an image is flipped upside down. We refer to that as inverted, and other times it's not flipped upside down, and we refer to that as upright. The S of loss refers to the size of the image. Images can be magnified in size or larger than the object. They can be the same size as the object, or they can be reduced in size or smaller than the object. The T in loss refers to the type of image. An image can have the type of real or of virtual. In a previous video, this one, I discussed how to construct ray diagrams for a converging lens. A ray diagram helps us to identify the location of the image produced, but it also helps us to identify the orientation, size, and type of the image. Here we see a ray diagram for the case of an object being located more than two focal lengths from the lens. We say the object location is beyond 2F. The object is represented by a green right side up arrow and the image is a green upside down arrow. It's labeled I. You'll notice that the ob image is located between the focal length and the 2F point in that it's an upside down image. We describe the orientation as being inverted. You'll also notice that the size of the image is smaller than that of the object, so we describe the size as being reduced in size. And the type can be determined if you look at what the refracted rays do after they pass through the lens. Here we notice the refracted rays are coming together or converging. That means the image will be a real image. If the refracted rays diverge or spread apart after coming through the lens, you'd have a virtual image. Here we see the ray diagram for an object located at the 2F point. When the object's at the 2F point, the image is located also at the 2F location. If you notice, the image is upside down when the object is right side up, so the orientation of the image is inverted. You can do a quick measurement on the screen and you can determine that the size of this image arrow is the same size as the object arrow. And finally, the type of the image is real since the refracted rays coming through the lens are coming together or converging at this image location. Here we see the ray diagram for an object that's located more than one focal length and less than two focal lengths from the lens. We describe the object position as being between 2F prime and F prime. The image is the upside down arrow that you see located to the right of the 2F position. We describe the location of this image as being beyond 2F. The image arrow is upside down while the object arrow is right side up. Thus we describe the orientation of this image as being inverted. The image is clearly larger than that of the object arrow, so we describe the size of this image as being magnified in size. Finally, the type is real since the refracted rays coming through the lens are coming together to a point, a sign of a real image. Here we see the ray diagram for an object located less than one focal length from the lens. We describe this object location as being between F prime and the lens. For the first time, the refracted rays that pass through the lens are spreading apart or diverging. And when we did the ray diagram, we determined the image location by taking these refracted rays and extending them backwards until they intersect, which gave us a location for the image on the same side of the lens as the object itself. We notice that the image arrow is a right side up arrow while the object arrow is also right side up. So we describe the orientation as being upright. For size, we describe the image as being magnified in size since it is clearly larger than that of the object itself. And finally, for type, we say virtual. Since the refracted rays are diverging or spreading apart after they pass through the lens, we know they'll be a virtual image. For lenses, all virtual images are upright and located on the same side of the lens as the object itself. 
picture is worth a thousand words, then an animation must be worth considerably more. Here in this animation, we see an object candle being moved along the principal axis from a location far away to a location near to a converging lens. A ray diagram is drawn and the image is located. You can clearly observe how the location, orientation, size, and type of the image changes as the object location is changed. If we observe the animation, we notice that when the object is located beyond 2F, the image is located between the F and the 2F position, it's reduced, it's real, and it's inverted. When the object is moved to the 2F position, the image is also at the 2F position on the opposite side of the lens, the same size as the object, it's inverted, and it's real. When the object is moved anywhere between the F and the 2F position, we notice now that the image is enlarged or magnified, it's inverted, it's real, and it's located beyond the 2F position. Finally, when we get the object located between the focal point and the lens, the image is on the same side of the lens as the object. It's an upright image, magnified in size and virtual. Let's use a table to summarize what we've learned about object image relationships for converging lenses. When the object is more than two focal lengths from the lens beyond the 2F prime position, the image will be located between the F and the 2F position on the side opposite the lens as the object. It will be an inverted image that's reduced in size and real. When you move the object so that it's exactly two focal lengths from the lens at the 2F prime position, the image will also be exactly two focal lengths from the lens on the opposite side of the lens as the object at the 2F position. It will be the same size as the object itself, it will be inverted, and it will be real. When you move the object so that it's between the 2F prime and the F prime position, the image will be located beyond the 2F position on the opposite side of the lens. It will be an inverted image image that's noticeably magnified in size and it will be a real image. Finally, when you move the object between the focal point and the lens, between the F prime position and the lens, the image will be on the same side of the lens as the object itself. It will be a noticeably magnified image that's upright and virtual. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each of them in the description section of this video. You have a simulation that allows you to move an object along the principal axis. You have a Minds on Physics mission and a Concept Builder, either one of which would be excellent next steps. And finally, you have a tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.